Let's try reading in a vector layer into our project. Uh, we go to Catalog, which is over here, and remember if you can't find Catalog, under View, Catalog Pane. Uh, we have to find a vector layer. Um, now vectors are a little more complicated, so I'm going to look at this um, ground cover data. How this data has been delivered to me, this is going to vary uh, for you depending on what data you're working with, but I've downloaded data from uh, that's been provided by the Swedish Land Survey via a service called GET that is run by this, uh, the uh, SLU, the Swedish Agricultural University. Um, this is just uh, how I've accessed the data um, and we have here a number of shape files for this uh, land cover, Marktäcke data, uh, and we can read the shape files in, um, but the one that's m of most interest is this one called my middle. Uh, why my middle? Uh, don't worry, um, but we can just drag that in if we want, and we get this this file that looks like that, and it contains. If we right click there, click on the attribute table. It contains uh, some data, of course. You can see that. And under this column called Detail Tip, uh, we have Swedish abbreviations of land cover types. So we have a, a coniferous forest, water, uh, open ground here, and, and some others. So that data is in there, but at the moment, uh, our vector layer looks pretty dull. I mean, we can see uh, boundaries between different types. Um, but it's all been styled using exactly the same style. So if we right click and then go down to symbology, we can change from single single symbol to unique values, uh, and then we need to uh, have it actually put them all in. So now we've coloured them all separately. That's good. Um, we can then go in and try and change these colours if we don't like them. So we can click on that there and make that water. And we can see the water now looks a little more like how we imagine water should look. Uh, this um, we can just uh, put to the land like that. Say so you can set this up as however you like. Um, let's go to that green there. I'm just choosing colors uh, quite freely wild. Um, and then wow, well, let's just take that colour. So I've now coloured this map. Good. Uh, do they agree with the standard? Well, maybe not. Let's, uh, at the moment, and we can see that we've got these names here and they've just been copied. The, the names are actually a copy of that which is in, in there. Right, good. I can pin this if I want, keep that accessible. Uh, thank you very much. And that's one way of getting data in, but we can also look at um, a layer file. So just in, in this circumstance, the data I've downloaded, for some reason under documentation, uh, they have a folder called ArcGIS, and in that there are so-called layer files. Layer is this, uh, um, a, a layer uh, it's a description uh, of the, the symbology to be used with a particular layer. So it's an instruction saying, get those layers, get that shape file, that shape file, that shape file, and style them like this. Uh, and that, that, that's what all it is. And layer is actually the, the old arc um, map uh, format, whereas ArcGIS would have Lux with an X on the end. Um, but for backwards compatibility, the, the data provider here just provides a, a layer file. Uh, which this program can read in. Uh, and we can see here that there are several variants, um, but we can start, we, we, we'll read the English language one in first, so right click, add to current map. Uh, and it should be read in. And what we get, we, we can turn that off, uh, and we can see something actually quite similar to what we had before, slightly different colours. But we've also got a whole lot of nonsense here. We have uh, all of these red markings here telling us that it can't find the files. This is because the Lear file is a set of instructions saying go and get that file, go and get that file. And the data provider has just said right I'm going to create one Lear file for whatever data that you, you choose to download and I haven't downloaded all of these other things. 
Um, so they're not there. They don't exist as shapefiles in my data set. So I can get rid of them. Um, if I do this, I can then say remove, get rid of all of those and get rid of all of those. There's a lot of doubles here as well that I'm not entirely sure about. But anyway, this is our main uh, property map. And we can see that we now have uh, colorings according to, this is the standard uh, setting uh, for these colors. They're according to the Swedish Land Survey's uh, desires, how they deem the map should look. Whereas this was my uh, homemade version, as, as, uh, as it were. Uh, so this is now read in. If we look at the attribute table for this, it's the same attribute table as we saw in the shape file because it, it is the shape file, just with some styling added onto it. Um, but here we can see well, none of these names exist here in this attribute table. What we've got here is if we right click on that and we go to symbology, it is simply a label here. And this we can change. So it looking it looks in the attribute table and finds anything called vatten, which is the Swedish word of water. It says show that as being this. So we can go in and edit that if we like. Um, we can uh, change that name to something else. Just remove all of that, uh, and it just becomes water. That's something we could do. Um, that is adding a, a layer file.